Barkley and I are going to share some tips for traveling with your dog. Whether you're getting ready to head out on your full-time RV adventure or just taking an RV vacation with your dog, we hope these tips will be helpful. The first thing you want to know is how your dog travels. If your dog has only ever been in the car to go on quick trips to the vet or the groomer, you might want to take him out on a longer drive at freeway speeds, on curvy roads, things like that. We once had to take a little chihuahua with us on a vacation and as soon as we got on the freeway the poor thing just started to shake and throw up and was pretty miserable. So if you find that your dog does get motion sickness, check with your vet. They may be able to prescribe some Dramamine or something like that that will make your travel a whole lot nicer for you and your dog. Keep in mind that your RV is a whole new environment for your dog. One that moves and maybe every time he opens the door there's something new outside. Barkley had lived for the first six years of his life in the same house, going out into the same backyard all the time. So he did get a little confused about what he was supposed to do. The first time that we went out, he would not go to the bathroom for about a day and a half because he was in a new place. And especially if there was, uh, you know, just gravel or rocks or dirt, something different than the grass that he was used to, it took him a while. So be patient. Be sure to take them out several times until they get used to it. And don't be tempted to throw out the bed, the ratty old toys, as you're cleaning out and getting ready to start your new adventure in your RV. Bring as many familiar things as you can. If the bed is in need of replacing, wait a while. Let them get used to the new surroundings before you replace the, the dog bed or the toys or things like that. Just make it as familiar as you can. Something that was very easy for Barkley that may be a problem for other dogs is having to be on a leash most of the time. Now, I keep Barkley on a leash with a step-in harness. I like this. It's easy. He just steps his front feet through there. It clips on the top. And I like having the harness because a lot of times, uh, especially small dogs or dogs with short snouts, have a real hard time breathing if the, they're pulling on the, the leash and it's attached to the collar and I've had to pull him away more than once from stepping on a scorpion or from another aggressive dog or something like that so I, I really prefer the harness but the just being on the leash is something that some dogs are really not used to if you've got a big backyard or you had a lot of property for him to run or you have a really active dog be sure to look for campgrounds and RV parks that have off-leash dog areas so that you can provide them with some space to run and, and do that if that's what they're used to. Barkley, he's a little more lazy. He doesn't really care, but a lot of dogs do need that extra off-leash exercise time. Keep in mind that in RV parks and campgrounds, your dog is probably going to be meeting a lot more new people and new dogs. So pay attention to how they react. For example, Barkley doesn't tend to react much to little dogs or dogs that are about his size, but he will bark and act more aggressively to dogs that are larger than he is. So if you see your dog doing those things, try to anticipate that and maybe walk on the other side or pull the leash up a little bit uh, tighter. Um, also with people, uh, Barkley loves kids and he usually wants everyone to pet him but he prefers to be the one to approach them so I try to keep him back a little more and let him go to the per person rather than um, having the person come up to him too quickly and having him act aggressively so just pay attention to those cues from your dog and try to anticipate problems before they happen Keep in mind, there are going to be times when you have to leave your dog alone in your RV. Uh, a lot of the national parks that we've been to don't allow dogs on the trails, or maybe they just have one or two trails that you can bring the dog on. You're going to have to go grocery shopping, do laundry, lots of places that don't allow dogs, so the dog is going to be alone in the RV. And RVs have the screens on the inside. When we first started, Barkley would kind of scratch on the screen when we left, so we put him in a crate for a while. He didn't really adjust to that too well, so we ended up just uh, 
found if we kept the shades closed so that he couldn't see out the window, he wouldn't scratch on the screens, and we'd just leave him for a short period of time and just gradually a little bit longer and a little bit longer until he realized, yes, we were coming back. So keep in mind that uh, there can be some problems leaving your dog alone. We had uh, some friends that uh, left their dog one day to go do some shopping. They had two beagles and they managed to jump up on the sink and turn the faucet on because in an RV a lot of times you just have a little pull faucet. Uh, water was running for hours. They came home to flooded carpets. It went down into the storage compartment. It was just a really big mess. So they now turn the water off at the <laughs> pedestal whenever they leave when they're hooked up to water in a park. Um, so keep that in mind. Another thing is temperature control. If you do a lot of, plan to do a lot of dry camping, um, make sure to remember that you're going to have to control the temperature in that RV if your dog's going to be left there for a long period of time. You may need solar to run fans or, you know, different things like that. Uh, an RV doesn't hold the heat or the cool in, so it could be perfect temperature when you leave, but if it's supposed to get hot during the day, make sure that you leave the air conditioning on so that uh, it doesn't get too hot in there or the heat if it's, if it's cold. But uh, regulating the temperature while you're gone is something that's very, very important. And last but not least, we want to share some of the items that you might want for your dog. We talked about the harness and the leash, but make sure that your dog's collar has a tag on it with at least its name and phone number. Barkley has a chip, but the only place that they can read a chip is at the shelters or at some vets. So be sure that your dog has a tag with your phone number so that if somebody finds it, they can just quickly call you and get you reunited. reunited. Also, you'll want to be sure to have a something that carries some dog pickup bags with you. Um, and of course, we love our collapsible water bowl. We use this all the time. Uh, you'll want to have a flashlight because you're going to be taking your dog out at night or in the evening when it's dark. So be sure you have a nice little flashlight. Another thing is think about the dog bowls, uh, if, especially if you're in a motor home. Look into those no-spill dog bowls. Barkley is a bit of a messy eater. He tends to drop the dry food everywhere, and I'm always afraid it's going to get stuck underneath the slide in the RV. So recently, I found this thing called the Neater Feeder, and we'll be sure to put a link to that and all the other items that we talked about in this video. If you have any uh, comments about other travel tips with your dog, please let us know. Don't forget to share and subscribe, and thanks for watching.